In Excel 2013, the new Timeline feature offers an interactive way to filter the data in your pivot table by date range. Here, we are looking at the sum of extended price for each salesperson by month. So basically, each salesperson's total monthly sales. To begin, I'll start in the Pivot Table Tools Analyze tab of the ribbon and click Insert Timeline. In the Insert Timelines dialog box, you want to select the date field or fields that you want to create a timeline for. Here I'll select Order Date, but you'll also notice that we could select Shipped Date, which is not in our pivot table, but it is in our data source. I'll just select Order Date and click on OK. And the Timeline dashboard appears on the worksheet. I'll move it out of the way a little bit. To select one month, you simply just click on that month in the timeline. And notice that your pivot table filters automatically. If you want to clear that filter, you can click on the little filter X on the top right hand side of the dashboard or on your keyboard, click Alt C. And that brings back all of your information. Now to select more than one month, you can click on a month and then hold down the shift key on your keyboard and select another month and that will give you a range. I'll go ahead and clear that filter to show you another way. Another way if I wanted to select August, September, and October would be to click on August and then roll my mouse over the handles left click and drag. I'll go ahead and clear that filter. Now months is the default date range for a timeline and you might have noticed that in the timeline there's a little drop down next to months but if you give a click on that you'll see that you can also filter by years and we've got just two here in our report by quarters or by days. So if I wanted to, I could just filter by March 20th, 2011 by giving a click or even March 15th, 2011. Or again, I can filter by a range. And I'll go ahead and clear that filter. Now, something else you can do, you don't just have to have one timeline. You can add multiple timelines. So I'll click back on my pivot table and in the Analyze tab of the ribbon, one more time, I'll click on Insert Timeline. And this time, I'm going to actually choose Order Date again and click on OK. So now I have two Order Date fields. And yes, they are looking at the same information, but maybe I want to have one show the months and the other one show the quarters. So now if I want to see just the information of let's say quarter 3 of 2011, I'll click on quarter 3 on the right, and you'll notice that on the left hand side in the timeline a couple of things have happened. Take a look at the scroll on the bottom. There's a blue line that shows where our information is and it's already been filtered out just by quarter three of 2011. So I can actually go on the left hand side here and say okay well let me see just August. So now in our pivot table we're just looking at August and that's also reflected here on the right. Notice that the timeline has gotten a lot smaller inside of quarter three. Now I'll go ahead and clear those filters by clicking on the clear filter button on the right hand side of my quarters. And one thing that I like to do when I have more than one dashboard associated with a pivot table, whether it's a timeline or a slicer, is to make them look a little bit different. So for instance, the timeline for months and the timeline for quarters are both in a light office blue color. So I'm gonna take the timeline for quarters and just make it look a little different. So I'm gonna go to the ribbon and in the Timeline Styles area, I'll just 
change the color just by giving a click to a new style. And something else that I could do is go over to the size section and change the height and width, or I can go to the show section to change what's shown. So for instance, if I don't want to see the header or title there of order date, I can just uncheck header. If I don't want to see the all periods header there, that's a selection label. I can uncheck that and it goes away. If I want my users to scroll in the timeline itself, not using the scroll bar at the bottom, I can uncheck scroll bar. Or if I don't want to see the drop down for years, quarters, months, or days, I can go ahead and uncheck time label in the show section. But I'll go ahead and leave that on. So you can see how the new timeline feature in Excel 2013 is a great interactive and easy way to filter your data by date range.